Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Since the channel's grown so much lately, we're going to redo a uh, video we did a long time ago. This is a question that we commonly get asked. It has to do with what part of the ship is armored. Uh, people assume, because we're a battleship, everything is armored. And that just isn't the case. The uh, weight of the armor it would take to protect the ship against battleship caliber guns is immense. It would be impossible. Even ships that predated the Washington Naval Treaty and did not have as tight of uh, congressional control over them or whatever each country's uh, congressional control is, were never fully armored. Older ships tended to have armor that tapered out towards the edges. Check out this picture of a dreadnought battleship from a uh, Jane's fighting ship. So you can see all the different shades and marks on it to show uh, the thicknesses of the various armors. There's the armored belt around the center, and then there's a thinner upper belt, and then there are belts on the ends, and then the, the extreme ends are even less armor. Like, it's this patchwork of armor plate that's not thick enough to stop battleship caliber guns, but it is thick enough to fuse an armor-piercing shell and cause it to detonate before it punches through the ship. Around 1911, with the battleship Nevada, the United States Navy came up with the idea of all-or-nothing armor protection. This resulted in an armored citadel and a couple of other protrusions that were armored as well, and then uh, leaving the rest of the ship completely unarmored. That way you're not wasting money or weight on things at the ends of the ship that aren't going to do you any good. So ships like New Jersey... Their, their bows, their sterns, essentially paper mache. The idea is an armor-piercing shell that hits that is going to punch in one side, punch out the other side, and not detonate at all. So this is going to keep the ship from receiving significant damage from that. A nice round 16-inch hole of a shell punching through, real easy to plug, real easy to weld a plate over to repair. Had that shell hit and exploded, even though that part of the ship isn't important, it's now making a big jagged hole that's more likely to take on water, cause additional damage, create fires. It's going to be far more difficult to repair, which just isn't worth it for an unimportant part of the ship. So, let's start off with our armored belt. Believe it or not, the actual like armored belt that you think of when you think of an Iowa-class battleship's 12.1-inch armored belt is only about one deck tall. And it doesn't run the full length of the ship. In addition to the armored belt, you've got on top the six inch thick armored deck. And then there's a lower belt beneath this that is tapering in thickness all the way to the bottom. The armored belt tends to be above the water line. That's to stop a full caliber hit uh, from an enemy battleship shell. However, if a shell strikes the water short, that impact might start the armor-piercing fuse, and it's going to start to slow down the shell. So the further below armor you are, the less protection you need there, because the shell isn't going to have enough force to punch through. This tapers all the way down to the very bottom of the ship, and the Iowa-class battleships have a triple bottom on them. That forms the lower part of the armored citadel. So, you've got your triple bottom, you've got your armored deck. At each end of your armored citadel is your armored bulkhead. This prevents hits that come through the unarmored bow or stern of the ship from being able to pass into the citadel. In addition to the armored deck, New Jersey also has a splinter deck one level above that. It's only about an inch and a half thick, just thick enough to detonate high capacity shells or decap armor piercing shells so that by the time they hit the main armored deck below, it's not going to do significant damage. So right now, we've essentially got an armored box. That armored box is great. Uh, but it's not going to do any good sailing. So in addition to the armored box, 
the Navy puts a bow and stern on the ship, like where the ship starts to get pointy, just for hydrodynamic efficiency, essentially. Remember, these parts of the ship are more or less completely unarmored. Now, the problem is some critical parts of the ship are outside of the citadel. What do we have inside of the citadel? We have the magazines for the gun turrets. Those would be roughly in these areas. And then all the space in between is the engine room. Uh, in our case, we've got four fire rooms and four engine rooms. So those are all protected in here. Some of the important stuff that ends up outside of this armored citadel are, of course, the gun turrets. So those are separate armored boxes linked to the armored citadel by their barbettes. So ammunition stored down here being passed up to the turrets is still protected by the armored box. Additionally, your steering gear needs an armored box. You've got a rudder down here. So you have to build an armored box to protect that. For the Iowa class battleships, they started out originally with this separate armored box. However, because of the Washington Naval Treaty coming to an end, the Navy was able to extend that armored box all the way back to the Citadel, except it's one level shorter. This included the refrigerators, the, the ship's reefers. They're not something that you need to protect. However, by enclosing all that interior volume inside of the armored part of the ship, the ship now has enough volume that's armored that if everything outside of the armored Citadel gets flooded, there's still enough reserve of buoyancy to keep the ship afloat. Her engines are in there so she can still sail. Her magazines are in there so she can still shoot. So the ship can do everything she needs to do even though the rest of her has been damaged or destroyed. There's one last critical thing that hasn't been armored yet. And that is the conning tower where the ship is steered from. So there's a separate armored trunk that comes up from the citadel, comes to the conning tower there, and creates a uh, position for the captain to steer from and a fire control position to aim the guns from if the main battery directors are destroyed. Now, just to finish draw our drawing here, so much of the ship is armored uh, with important stuff in it that we don't really have much room for our crew. So the superstructure includes a lot of berthing spaces in it. We don't have any fire control directors. So we need to build these uh, towers here to have the uh, fire control instrumentation in them. This way you can see targets from far away. Finally, we don't have anywhere to vent the exhaust gases from the engine rooms in this area. So we have to put in our smokestacks. And now suddenly, we have a full Iowa-class battleship. But, as you can see, significant parts of the ship are largely unarmored. Hits here at the bow of the ship, hits that don't take the barbettes in the superstructure or uh, the second deck of the ship here, hits at the stern of the ship where the uh, mess decks are. That is completely unarmored, but that's okay because there isn't really anything important there that would need to be manned in combat. These are birthing spaces, offices, mess decks. The crew isn't gonna be there in combat. They're gonna be in the magazines, uh, in the engine rooms, in, in the spaces that are important for general quarters type things. So we can lose all of those sorts of spaces and still have a combat effective battleship. What do you think? 
Should more of the ship had thinner armor on it so that the whole thing was armored? Or should less of the ship have more armor on it so that the places that do get hit are going to stop shells outright? As it turns out, a little bit over a third of the ship is heavily armored, and that has some of the most important stuff in it. But it's not perfectly well armored to stop all battleship shells all the times from all ranges. Let us know in the comments section down below. All battleships, even New Jersey, have interesting compromises into their designs. Unfortunately, New Jersey's armor was never tested. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. If we raise enough money, maybe I'll be able to go to art school. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the museum. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Mem our smokestacks. And now suddenly, we have a full Iowa-class battleship. Yeah, I'm going to see if the Philadelphia Art Museum will accept this.